Hello and welcome. Welcome to today's session. This is Nelly Deutsch and uh, I'm going to be moderating. So if you could add in the chat box where you're from. The session is about recording yourself as a way to improve your language skills and uh, specifically speaking writing, listening, and everything that comes with immersion. So hello Pablo, good to see you, Marat. And if you could add where you're from, we've got Russia, Paris. All right, great. Uh, people will be coming in. Uh, this session is being recorded. It's recorded on Wiz IQ. It's also recorded on Camtasia and it'll appear on YouTube. And for that reason, I have uh, minimized the chat and the attendee list in case you don't want your name to appear. So what you see in the image is a place in near Asacion in Paraguay, uh, where I spent uh, about a week, which seemed a lot longer, uh, this is a place just outside. It's a country club near the uh, Blue Lake. And what we're going to be doing and discussing today is immersion. And the reason I say doing is because you're listening to me right now. You're listening to authentic English. It may be meaningful. It may not be meaningful, but it is authentic because I'm a native speaker of English. Hello, Helena. So you're going to actually teach yourself as a way to learn. And uh, recording yourself is a way to teach, but it's about you. All right, so uh, with that out of the way, this is what we're going to be discussing. We will discuss reading material recording the material, listening to your recordings of the content or the material. And when I say reading material, it's text. And then evaluating what you hear, which is your voice, reading, and then reflecting on the process. So it's you're going to reflect on the reading material, on your recording as you listen to it, and finding ways of evaluating yourself. So this is exactly what teachers do for their students, but you're gonna do it for yourself. Now this is good for everybody and for any language. It doesn't necessarily have to be English, it could be any language. All right, so this is a chance for you to experiment and try this out. So uh, are there any questions before we get started? Anything that you'd like to ask? Let me pull up the uh, chat here. Any questions? All right, feel free to uh, ask questions. Put a question mark before or at the end, so I know it's a question, it'll be easier for me to uh, pick it up as we go. Thank you, Pablo, for the question mark. Okay, but if you could add text too, so that, uh, okay. Where, ah, okay, good for you, Haifa. That's a great question. All right, we're gonna go through it. Any other questions? Excellent. Um, Vakaru and Audio Boo. <laughs> wow, what names? Okay, I hope no boo boo. I have had problems with embedding. Why do you need to embed? <laughs> if it's um, Moodle, you don't have to embed anymore. And Voxo, Voxo Pop. <laughs> okay, all right, we're going to use simpler tools and um, let's get. Uh, moving. Okay, so this is uh, just the plan. So the next slide is going to be exposure. 
and immersion. How many of you have heard of the idea of immersive learning? At the beginning, I gave you the uh, pool. Um, just as an aside, my children were all swimmers by the time they were three years old because I immersed them in the pool. I just, well, I didn't throw them in the pool. They actually threw themselves, and I was there to catch them. But uh, they realized very quickly that uh, it was very easy to swim. It was very natural for them uh, to swim, and they liked it a lot. So um, I'm a great believer in immersion, including throwing, not throwing my kids in the water, of course, but the idea is to, uh, to go in without fear, okay? Um, and I think that's one of the things that uh, I believe in. Okay, so you're in Paris. All right, so Pablo, you're originally from Mexico, I believe, right? Okay, so back to the slides. So exposure to um, authentic, real language. So if you're learning Spanish, it's going to be real Spanish. If it's English, it's going to be real uh, text. And we're talking about text here in English. And through immersion, through uh, recording yourself, reading, you will eventually improve your grammar. You will naturally become aware of it, or at least your brain will, and hopefully your, uh, your talking mind will not interfere and let things happen. You will develop some sort of language sentence structure of that language if you keep doing this and relax and not let your talking mind convince you that there's something wrong if you just do it naturally. You will uh, improve and uh, increase your vocabulary. Your pronunciation will improve unless you've got problems hearing. Okay, I must admit that this is only for people whose hearing is good. It does not work for those that have um, problems hearing. Your writing style will improve. All right, so that's exposure to immersion. You might want to uh, learn more about immersion and um, I'm going to share just a, a very simple, if you Google immersion, you'll get a lot of information. But just a um, very, very simple, very general information about immersion from Wiko, Wikipedia. Okay, so there's a little bit about immersion. I've always been a believer of immersion, as I said, even with my kids. So I practice what I preach. I also picked up a few languages through immersion. All right, so reading material. It's so easy nowadays to get authentic first language reading material. Okay, you can get it anywhere. So you'll find, you'll have to look for something that interests you, all right? So uh, not something that you have to read because a teacher told you to read or someone told you that it's a good idea to read, but something that you find interesting. Now, if you don't find it interesting, drop it. <laughs> look for something else until you find something that really, truly speaks to you literally speaks to you okay so it has to be first of all authentic real language of the first language whether it's english spanish whatever language target language you want to learn it has to be interesting and it has to be relevant to your life okay i mean outer space might be interesting but is it relevant to your life Okay, so uh, something that's relevant or meaningful, all right? That's uh, very, very important. I'm looking for questions. 
Okay, so if you have a question, make it look like a question with a question mark. All right, next. You're going to find it on the internet. You can do a Google search for your favorite topic and start looking. And by the way, just searching for things is a great way to immerse yourself in the language. So you're not doing it in your first language or net, you're doing it in the target language. So if it's English, because you want to learn English, you're going to do this in English. So turn your Google into English. By the way, how many of you have your Google in, a for, in your first language or native language? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay, if oh, I think, is the chat disabled? No. Okay, so please um, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay, do you, thumbs up, do you have Google search engine in English or in your first language. So I have mine in English, of course, because um, I'm not involved in learning a language right now. But if I am, I'm going to turn it into that language. Hello, Lourdes. Good to see you. So if you want to learn Spanish, make sure that your Google is in Spanish and you're going to search for things in Spanish. I know that might be difficult. You might need to use a Google Translate, but give it a try. Okay, so uh, we're talking about doing the Google search for the material, the reading material, in the target language. Next, recording. You've asked, how do I record the text? Well, you need a microphone and you need to have audio so you can hear yourself. Okay, so microphone and audio. Input and output. Next, I suggest you use Audacity. Now, let me take you to Audacity. Audacity is, um, I don't know if any of you have used it. It is excellent. Really, really good. While I'm screen sharing, you may find that the chat uh, disappeared at the bottom left side of the screen, if it has. Don't panic. Just uh, click on it. It'll pop right back. All right, at some point you should be seeing this. This is Audacity and notice audacity.sourceforge. But if you Google it, you will get Audacity. You can download it on your Mac or on your PC. It is completely free and the sound is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And it's free, yes, if you want to donate. It's not mine, but it's a great program for recording. Next, you might want to use Screencast-O-Matic. This is Screencast-O-Matic. It's completely free, but if you want to pay, it's $29 or $30 for three years. And then you can also upload it to, or you can use the uh, writing tools. In any case, I think for a free account, you can also upload to YouTube. And here you can get more information. It says 15 for a year, but actually it's uh, 10 if you uh, do it for three years or something. So take a look at it. You can have 15 minutes free, but if it's pro, you can have three hours. Uh, you can record the screen, publish it for free, and your recording doesn't have to be more than 15 minutes anyways. So this is completely free, and you can publish it as MP4, AVI, FLV, movie. All right, but if you pay for the pro, you get more benefits. But actually, I think this is, you know, enough. Okay, so you don't have to pay anything. That's screencast-o-matic. 
Okay, let me bring that to you. I talk a lot about screencast o -Matic. So let's get back to class. Okay, so if the uh, chat is at the bottom left, just click on it and it'll pop right back. Okay, so let me just... Um, there. I don't know if what is great. <laughs> what I'm saying is great. I like to think that, but you know, that's okay. Uh, so there's Screencast-O-Matic. Audacity, notice, is spelt like this. Audacity. Okay, there it is. Just Google it. Okay. Any questions so far? Thumbs down, thumbs up if there are any questions. Well, if you think of any, just add them to the chat. Next is listening. Listening. You will be listening after you record your voice through Audacity or Screencast-O-Matic. Okay. You will be listening to yourself. Now, this part is very, very important. A lot of uh, language learners are afraid because they don't listen to themselves. If they were to listen to themselves, in most cases, they would be very, very pleased with what they hear. Because generally, language learners, we all are very critical of what we sound like until we hear our voices. And then usually we're just so pleased. Okay, at least most of us are. So you listen to yourself. And trust me, you'll be the best judge. Because it's about you. And the more you listen, the more you will learn. Once you listen, you will evaluate yourself. And there are many rubrics. You can, remember what I said, you're going to be a teacher, whether you're a teacher or not. So you're going to create a rubric. Yes, your own rubric. Now, if you're not familiar with rubrics, Google it. How many of you are familiar with rubrics? I used to love them. Now I don't know if I love them anymore, but they're good. They're good because they keep us on our toes. Um, you haven't used them, Pablo? Um, they're good and you can have they have oh you don't know Helena uh, there are lots of rubrics online rubrics uh, for free that you can look at so take a look at rubrics and make up your own for evaluating yourself what would you because you're the best judge what would you like to be able to do when you hear yourself, what kind of sound would you like to have? Okay, so you're evaluating yourself. This is called self-evaluation, and it's the best kind because you know exactly where what your goals are and where you want to go. Okay, so self-evaluation. So, Lords, for yourself. Remember, you're doing this for yourself. And then you, if you're a teacher, of course, you can do this with your students. But first, try it out yourself. Okay, modeling is really important because if you try out things, you'll find that it'll be a lot easier to work with your students. So try it out. Next, you're going to reflect. Yes, you're going to reflect and uh, you're going to do it on a blog or a wiki. So how many of you have blogs? And how many of you have wikis? And how many of you have none? Okay, if you could add blogs, wikis, or none. All right, so everybody has a blog? Excellent. So I do not. So Pablo, you have to get a blog or a wiki, and it's up to you. Oh, Thomas, hello. Thomas has a blog. Excellent. 
All right, Pablo, so you get a blog or a wiki. Now, if you're looking for um, different kinds of blogs or wikis, if you want to find blogs, you can use Blogger, which is completely free, or you can use WordPress, which is also free. How many of you have WordPress? And how many of you have Blogger? The only reason I have Blogger, well, I have a few WordPress, is because I don't like the way you log in with WordPress. I hate the login. Isn't that silly of me? But that's why I don't like to use my WordPress. I prefer Blogger, even though WordPress has a lot more features, I think. Um, Blogger has an easy login system. Helena has both. Excellent. You also have a WordPress and Blogger. Oh, really, Thomas? No video? That's unusual. And you know what? There are many advantages to using wikis. I know that many of you, how many of you have used wikis? Wikis are awesome. I would use wikis with my class. Well, I have in the past. I have used everything. But wiki, there is wiki spaces. Pablo, try wikis for yourself, for your studies, for your classes, to keep uh, track of all your, uh, all your work. Yes, try a wiki. You can try uh, wiki spaces. They're completely free. PB Works or Wiki Educator. You can try Wikipedia if they let you, but they don't usually. Pablo, I think you would like wiki spaces. I think PB Works is a bit difficult. It's harder. Wiki Educator is the easiest. You have all of them? Helena, you've used Wiki Spaces, PB Works. There used to be others, but they they kind of disappeared. Uh, Wikipedia is Media Wiki. And Wikipedia's system is like Wiki Educator. It doesn't allow you to do what you want. You can't create an account and start wikiing. Okay, but on Wikispaces, you're free to add what you please. And the same thing on PBWorks. So this is for the public. I think that Wikipedia also has a public um, wiki. But I'm not sure what it is because I didn't like it, so I forgot about it. Great, Helena. All right, so what are we talking about? Again, okay, just to uh, recapitulate, we're talking about exposure to real language and getting grammar through exposure and immersion, through recording real text. The next stage, of course, is recording listening. That's a bit more difficult. That's writing it and then recording it. That's another more difficult advanced system. So there is the uh, advanced system of listening, um, recording, writing, and then recording yourself. Okay, that's, that's a different kind of process, but it does exist. You can get a listening record the listening, and then write what you hear as you hear. Record yourself, in other words, read what you wrote down, and then listen to yourself. Has anyone tried that before? It used to be very popular, uh, I think, in the 80s, 70s. But I'm not sure that language teachers are doing it these days. All right. So, oh, you have a German. Exactly. Excellent. You know, there's some great ideas from other languages. All kinds of tricks and, and tips on how to learn. For example, in French, I had to learn chunks, not words. But I had to learn, say, the verb and the preposition. 
Where in English, you know, it doesn't work that way. So yes, you can learn from other languages. Oh, really? Tongue twister. That sounds great. And then you develop grammar through exposure. You develop sentence structure, which is really grammar, but the feel of the language, the sentence order, which is really, really important. You um, get a lot of vocabulary. You're exposed to vocabulary. Of course, you get the pronunciation and writing style. Did it help you with the tongue twisters? All right, and then finally, this is what we've been talking about. We're talking about doing the following, and this is what you're going to do, and I hope share this, okay? And I'll show you where you're going to share it by screen sharing and taking you there. You're going to be sharing your recordings if you want. Now, if you're a language teacher, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. And sharing it is... Um, a way to get over, you know, get over our shyness, get over, um, in general, being scared and allowing our students to model what we'd like them to do, and that is to speak freely. All right, so this is the link to the course. Okay, I just grabbed it for you. But I also would like to show you this um, website. It's called Audible. It's an Amazon company, and it's all about listening. It's voice immersion reading. And this, I think, is really a great way to improve your listening and vocabulary, and that is listening to real language. It costs money, that's the only thing, and it's through Kindle. Okay, but if you'd like this, you may want to uh, try it out. Of course, there are also free uh, audio and video content on the internet. So let me go back to class, stop sharing, share the link with you. Okay, so here's the link. Japanese books. Wow. Isn't that exciting? Maybe you can share it with us. I'd love to learn Japanese. But yes, that's how we learn. And Zen. Oh, I didn't know that, Thomas. So I bet you really like that practicing mindfulness name for the uh, practice Moodle website. <laughs> now I know why you, you caught on that. Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to share a video with you just to capture the idea of audio. Okay, so here it is. Let me know um, once you hear it. Wish you had more time to read? When you put down your Kindle, pick up right where you left off in your audiobook. Chapter 2, Friday, April 8th. Odig and Holmberg arrived at Göteborg Central Station. Whisper Sync for Voice from Kindle and Audible means your books and audiobooks are always in sync. 12.30, the steady flow. Next of time you buy a Kindle book, just add professional narration and you're set. That first made the audience take notice of me in the hunger. It's Whisper Sync for Voice from Kindle and Audible. Now, this is uh, one way of getting your students to. Um, I hope it stopped for you. you. Should let me know in the chat if the media stopped. Um, this is one way of getting your students or getting yourself, okay, we're talking about students and you, getting you to uh, listen, write, and then record what you've written from, and let me try to get rid of this, and then um, listen to yourself and compare it. Okay, so the language was really, really fast. 
as you notice but that's another way getting a recording um, video recording or audio recording I think it's a lot easier to go to YouTube and get video recordings listen to it write down um, at least uh, maybe three minutes three to five minutes of what they say write it down record it listen to it evaluate and then you go through the whole same thing evaluate and after you evaluate reflect again it's not reading it's going to be listening writing recording listening evaluating reflecting yes it does because when you're watching a video it's like watching television only it's in small parts um, I don't think that you should do it while watching TV um, but it could be done sure exactly hello uh, Jordana yes exactly there is a um, a YouTube video where uh, movie stars famous movie stars read stories and that's one of the things that you might um, you know want the younger students the younger kids to do or you yourself you know depending on your level you might want to but again don't forget what we said the material whatever it is should be authentic firstly yes but it should be let me get there um, it should be relevant okay so whether it's reading or listening we're talking about reading today but it should be authentic interesting and relevant it has to be relevant now how Fabiana would Voki help in this case are you going to add text record the Voki listen to the Voki have write what the Voki says without looking at the text that you already have and then reading the text okay so yes you could do that yes it does it's a lot of work that's why I'm saying I'm not sure whether that you can also use don't forget you can use slide speech how many of you have heard of slide speech you have of course all right so yes well you haven't Haifa well uh, can someone add it to the link did I say slide speech yes it is and so is John and by the way John is not going to get funding if nobody uses it so you really have to go in there and use it oh you used it in the Moodle MOOC that's great that's great you saw it on scoop it too so you might want to write it down um, what is it slide and use it so that John can get funding other oh, thank you Pablo because otherwise he's not going to get funding so he asked me to tell everybody use it if you like it use it spread the word um, it's his invention but the only reason he's getting funding is if people use it if they don't use it he's gonna lose it so imagine if we lose something like that it's so precious so slide speech is a great way Mio. it's a great way because uh, you get the text spoken you can listen to it you can read it yourself with your own voice record your voice reading the same text and then go through the whole process of listening okay the same thing of listening evaluating reflecting on a blog or wiki now it's really really important to go through the whole process okay really really important no shortcuts because shortcuts are not going to get you where you want to go okay so this is where discipline comes in Adobe that sounds great Pablo 
Google Chrome. Excellent. That's great. Great. Maybe you can add all these ideas to the course area. Okay, so um, the course area again, I added at the beginning. So here is the course area for Leo. Oh, mind you, it's a dollar though. I don't know. How many of you uh, have joined Leo? It is a dollar. <laughs> I know that's a joke. Um, how come I can't get it in? Oh, there we go. There it is. Um, Fibiana, that's the course. It's not only for English language learners. It's uh, for teachers as well. The course is forever and ever. Uh, I think the course has been going on for a couple of years. Well, that's why discipline is so important, Jordana. So do it. And I think that if you are committed, if you have a blog, you will be more committed to your blog and to your readers because people will want to know what you're doing and they will respond. So again, reading material, record it. Or if you're using slide speech, you can add the reading material to a slide and have it spoken, listen to it, and then you record the same text. Now, it could be in different languages. It doesn't necessarily have to be English, depending on the language that you're learning. And then listen to it, evaluate through rubrics that you will write, and reflect on a blog or wiki. All right, so are there any questions at this time? Any comments? You've added some great comments here about uh, Google Chrome and um, language voices on Google Chrome. Are you happy with Google Chrome? I don't use it. I don't know why. Oh, you are, Fibiana. I keep going back and forth, but I never really... Uh, stick to it. I'm on a Mac, so I use Safari. And I like the way Safari moves. Spelling, you mentioned, Pablo. What about spelling? Ah, uh, Fabiana. So there are problems with Chrome. That's what I found. And I don't like to have problems. You know, um, no, you wrote something about spelling. I'm, I'm not sure if that's to me or... You want to improve your spelling, is that it? No, oh, Fabiana. Macs are not that easy to get used to. They're very different. Translation or Adobe. Oh, about the Leo course. What about the Leo course? They sound fake. Okay. So use your own voice. You're talking about the slide speech sound fake and the Vokey. What about Vokey? You can also pay, I don't know how much, but you can pay for voices and you can have um, speech to text and um, text to speech today, text to speech. <laughs> yes, they are. They're great. But once you get used to them, you don't want to go back. I have two Macs. One is a laptop, Mac Air, and one is a huge screen, and I just love them. You're right. I think, yes, Thomas uh, is good with voices. What is that? Cheerbit? Do you have the link to that? I've never heard of that. Cheer bit. Sounds good. But you know, generally, if you pay, you get good voices. You do? You have a large selection? Are they all free, Thomas? All right, so why don't you share them with us? Uh, you can share them with us on um, on the other courses. There's uh, teaching 
with technology is one course do you have it on Wiz IQ the other course is blending and flipping um, classes uh, with technology <laughs> there's some other ones yeah hey thought cheer bit sounds great let's see what that's like share your audio is excellent and I see that there's also an apps for it looks lovely yeah I think I have an account sometimes I think something looks uh, different then I find out that I have an account when I try to create one yeah it looks interesting thank you for sharing that did I just um, throw myself out of the class no I'm here what do you mean you have files or oh, you put them on Google Drive yeah I think you can put quite a bit on Google Drive um, they're pretty good with that that would be great maybe you can create a uh, Google Drive document for us Thomas and then just share the link in the courses anybody have the courses at their fingertips if not I think I can find them Hopefully, let's see if I can find um, the courses so I can share them with you. One course is Teaching with Technology. I don't know if you've joined it. And the other one is Flipping Classes. So this is the course. Okay, this is the link. What languages? Wow, you've got so many. My goodness. Well, I'm interested in German. Uh, Spanish personally but I'm sure others have their languages those are the two languages that I uh, I need right now very much and this is the other course on blending sorry blending and flipping okay so there it is blending and flipping Okay, so those are two courses. No, I'm not into Japanese and Chinese yet. I will be after I complete my German and um, Spanish, and then I want to do Arabic, I think, before Japanese and Chinese. All right, so I'd like to thank everyone for joining us, unless you have um, some questions. And I'm looking forward to seeing your blogs okay so feel free to <laughs> different alphabets yes for Russian feel free to share your blogs please and if you don't if you're too embarrassed you can make them private you know you can make blogs private you don't have to make them public and then you can share them with whoever you want okay so thank you very much everybody and um, this will be you are that's great thank you thank you everyone have a wonderful rest of the week and see you over the weekend bye for now bye bye